Howdy, welcome back to my channel. I'm drinking a monster right now. And in today's video, I'm gonna teach you how to animate in Roblox Studio because who doesn't wanna know how to animate? So, I don't know, it's not really anything else to say. So let's get right into this tutorial. Now I've actually done one of these tutorials before, but it was a bit of a long video. I covered more in that one, but at the same time, like I just said, it's a longer video. So with this one, I'm gonna focus on narrowing it down, teaching you guys the basics so you can just watch this video and be like, bam, and go animate stuff. So really to get started, we need a rig. So you can go to Avatar, Rig Builder, and there's a few different choices here. R15 looks like this. So R15 has all like of these parts. You have hands, arms. There's another arm joint in here. So basically, yeah, I'm, I don't know why I'm explaining it. You guys play Roblox, but basically it's a lot more complicated. If you wanted to animate, it would take more time. So for this tutorial, I'm gonna show you guys how to animate on an R6 blocks av block avatar. So it looks like this, there's only six body parts. Actually, let me count them, make sure. I... Yeah, yeah, there's six. All right, so it's really easy. Really, you just click this rig, you press animation editor, and now you have this weird UI. Then after you click your rig, you'll get this little line, which is called the timeline. You have a grid and your character is now highlighted. So first, let's name our animation. I'm just gonna name it Dumb YouTube Video. And you'll notice you can click on body parts and now you'll get this weird rotation thing. And when you move something, you see this thing down here up here. So first, that's called a keyframe. That's basically marking where that body part is at a certain time. So it starts off here. If I move this line up here, which this is one second away, this is a one second animation. If I move it up, it's marking where it is one second later. And then because we're not animating in a style where it's like from one point to another, it will automatically interpolate the flame. It will interpolate the frame. So it will smoothly go up. That's basically all you need to know. End of tutorial. No, I'm just joking. Bless you, air freshener. I know you guys didn't hear it, but it sneezed. I promise I'm not crazy. But basically, that's all there is to animation. Of course, the more you know about making things move smoothly, the better your animations are going to look. But this is basically all you're going to do. So I have everything visible here. You can just press plus and it will show an option to add all body. That's how you see all the body parts. Then right here on the top where it says rig or whatever the name of this little character is, you can right click on this darker one and do add keyframe here to add a keyframe for every body part. So you don't have to do it manually. Then you just really, you just drag this a little forwards. So I dragged it there or I like to animate frame by frame, but just so I can show you guys different keyframe types, I'm going to just, whoops, I'm just going to do it like a Neanderthal and just put a keyframe right here. Now, by default, it's either going to be on this one or this one. In order to switch between the two, just press R. This is rotation. This is position. So I'll just drag the arm up like this and put it outwards. And I have this in like janky, terrible animation. I'll rotate the torso a little bit. Nothing too special. It's just so you guys can learn. There. So now he'll just, whoa, you get back in your spot. That is not your spot. Who in the, there we go. So now it will do that. It's kind of just janky. It's funky looking. So I'm gonna teach you guys about easing styles. You shouldn't abuse easing styles because I think frame by frame animation looks smoother, but easing styles certainly help, especially if you're a solo dev and you don't wanna spend, I don't know, 30 hours animating things for no reason. So you can highlight all of your keyframes, but then you can right click, ignore that random key press. Uh, you can right click, and you have these options called easing style and easing direction. So I'm not gonna show off all of them. I highly recommend you guys just kind of go through and test them out. But really, uh, cubic V2, I'll press cubic V2 and I'll go to easing direction. It's on in right now, let's see what that looks like. So he kind of like goes in, like it starts off slow and then speeds up like, like how can I explain this? Ignore this image of the bread, but basically the animation starts off slow and then ramps up. So that's in. Out would be the opposite. It starts off fast and slows down. So I'll show you guys what that looks like. We'll switch it to out. So he kind of just goes in and slows down near the end. So as you can imagine, in out 
would probably look something like this. An S. That's the best way I can explain it. Believe it or not, guys, I've been an animator for like seven years. But we don't talk about that. That that era of my life is behind me. I use those skills to make mediocre videos now where it doesn't require any of my skills. But regardless, it will look something like this, where it's smooth in the beginning. It gets so it slows down, gets faster in the beginning, and it slows down near the end, which can look pretty smooth. If you want to mix them, mix and match them, I could start off with in, and then right at the second one, I could set it to out so as I go in for the animation it will get fast reach that middle point and then slow down near the end so let's just see what that looks like it's gonna look like a terrible punch sort of I don't even know what this is supposed to be but you can see it speeds up and then seamlessly will kind of just like slow down near the end and with the other animation styles you can really just linear is the one you start off with by default where it's like here, I'm set it all to linear. All right, so it's like do, 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 do. bounce is kind of erratic. There's a step, there's elastic and bounce. I like elastic for making like little. Okay, Jesus. Let's set the style to be out instead. You can see it's like you out. Like he like moves, and it bounces. The more space you give between the animation keyframes the more of a like jiggle effect is going to have if that makes any sense the less space you give the less of a jiggle effect it's going to have same goes for bounce instead of elastic it's going to be more so like a five nights at freddy's door shutting where it hits the ground and then bounces up a little bit five nights at freddy's doors are probably a bad example because they literally use power to keep themselves shut so they don't really bounce off the ground but imagine if they did so it looks something like this it's like really robotic it's a better example would be fnaf animatronics then really that's all there is constant is if you want to do stylized animation where it's like frame by frame you know stuttery jumpy animation there's no frame interpolation there's nothing in between so it just goes and honestly this is one of my favorite animation styles to mess with like my favorite easing styles because you could just do literally whatever with it i don't think there's any way to necessarily make it look bad because if you're doing it this way <laughs> You, uh, you get extra credit just because it's fun. So I could just paste these keyframes with uh, control C, control B on constant. And you'll just see it's just stinky. Like, this is so weird. It looks glitchy. But yeah, that covers that. That covers easing style, easing direction. Now, how would I actually put this animation on something? Well, I'm going to space it out. And for the sake of the tutorial. Oh, yeah. By the way, hold down control and scroll on the timeline to do this. That's how I do that. But yeah, for the sake of the tutorial, I'm going to not make the animation look like this. I'm just going to make it completely random. And I'm going to slap an in-out uh, cubic queen on it just so you can tell there's some kind of ease on it. I said tween, but it's, it's kind of like the same thing. But yeah, cubic V2. We're going to go animation in-out. And yeah, looks like he's doing some weird like break dance. So how would I use this? Well, you just go before we export it. I should probably tell you guys about looping. So by default, the animation's only going to play once. But if I want to play over and over again, even in game, you just check this little box right here. Now the animation's looped. So every time it reaches the end, it will automatically play again. So yeah, for some animations, you could loop them if you don't want I mean, if you want them to play over and over again. For this one, I'm not going to loop it. Then before we export, you have something called animation priority. If you're making a character animation, like, for example, an idle, you'd use idle. If you're doing movement, like running, jumping, stuff like that, you do movement. Then actions are kind of whatever you want them to be. An action can be anything from a sword swinging to the player doing like a little like, oh, I picked up a coin and some funny animation. And then action two has priority over action. So if action's playing, if the first animation that's playing is just a normal action, but then an animation action two plays, it will go overwrite the original animation and play over it. And vice versa. That's what. That's why you have multiple of these. If you're doing attacks, and you had it go one sword swing, two sword swings, three sword swings, you would just set it to be action one, action two, action three. So for this animation, I'm just gonna set it to action. Then you just go to publish to Roblox. You give it a name. So dumb YouTube video. You publish it. You make sure you save this asset ID. 
So I copied that asset ID. Instead of replicated storage, I'm just gonna stick an animation. I'm gonna put the animation ID and I'm gonna do dumb break dance. Now we just need to put this on a person. So I'm gonna do it to myself. I'm gonna make myself do that after five seconds. So inside of the starter character scripts, so when I join the game, I'll just insert a local script, name it animation handler. I don't know why I struggle to type that. And then I'll just do local player equals game dot players dot local player local char for character equals player dot character. Then I'll do local hum for humanoid equals char dot humanoid. Then I'll get the animation. So local anim equals game dot replicate. Whoa game dot replicated storage dot anim dumb break dance now we just need to put it on the character which is really easy so we'll just do anim whoops we don't start with anim we'll do local dance anim equals hume dot animator which it's not gonna autofill for you but trust me it's there animator load load animation and we'll just put in anim then right under here, we can copy dance anim. We'll do task.await5 and we'll do dance anim play. So if I just go into the game, which by default, <laughs> oh, I'm a crab and I'm an R15. Let me fix this. If you guys are wondering how to set your game to R6, you just have to save the game as something. So for YouTube, so I just published no data sharing, no team create, and then it won't make you reload the game. If you change those settings, it's going to close the game and reopen it. But yeah, you just go to avatar. Then we just set it to R6. Yes. And now we, we just go in. Yeah, I became a crab, by the way. But yeah, there we go. The animation plays. It's that easy. Now, there's a lot more stuff that you can do with that stuff. There's a lot more you can do with animations in general. I'll show you just a few of the functions, but I won't go too deep into it. Just as you can play an animation, you can stop an animation, and you can also slow animations up and speed them down. So this right here is called an animation track, by the way. I should have probably told you guys, but if I go animation, dance anim, um, adjust speed, I can make it, actually I'll make it half the speed that it normally is and I'll just dash out this stop. So if I go in, I'm just gonna make it two seconds before it plays so you guys don't have to wait five whole seconds. You can see the animation might have been a little bit slower and have no idea. So let's, let's just make it a little, let's make it even slower. Yeah, it's not getting slower. So I fixed it. All I had to do was just set the animation speed underneath the animation after it's already playing. So yeah, doing that, I can slow animations down to half their speed really easily without having to actually edit the animation. Still, make sure you save all your animations so you, in case you need to edit them, you can. And if you set it to zero, it will pause the animation. So my best way to showcase this would be to just ask.wait. This animation is like three seconds long, so I'll just do one and I'll set it to zero and that will just kind of pause the animation. Just like that. Now, just to save you guys some time, I'm not going to go and talk about every quirk of the animator. Just know there's a lot more stuff to learn. I will in the future make a tutorial, though, where I cover how to rig and animate objects like doors, blocks, you know, make rigs so you can make like monsters for your games. But just to keep today's video simple. I'm going to leave it off here. If you do want to know a little bit more, but you don't want to wait for the new video on my channel, there's an older animation video where I talk a bit more in depth, but that video is kind of long. So I understand if you don't want to watch it, but yeah, if you guys enjoyed, I am glad if you guys did not enjoy, I'm in your walls.